trying to do the mario thing anyway what's everybody welcome to system crappers i'm david wilson we're back with another friday live stream where we get together as a community and talk about whatever topic that i've come up with at the last minute without preparing at all uh, and just see what happens uh, as a result of that uh hopefully we don't have any streaming problems today last week somehow youtube decided that it just wanted to stop streaming um about three quarters of the way through the stream uh twitch was still working so this is my notice to all of you right now. If for whatever reason YouTube starts doing something really weird and you see the spinning wheel and it starts buffering and doesn't come back, just jump over to Twitch, uh, twitch.tv slash systemcrafters and the stream will probably still be up there because that's what happened last time. Uh, we still were able to uh, talk to each other on Twitch and it was all good. So hopefully no, no more problems this time. Um, so let me uh, say hello, hello to the people who have joined so far. Uh, hello to Ethernet uh, Case, who's always joking on me. Uh, Dimitri, John, uh, Tom Kreiser Photo, Alejandro, Ace of Grapes Wine Company, that's cool. Uh, Gavin, uh, Jason, Piotr, Robert, uh, Aurora Dreyko, uh, Gio, uh, Dari Gaz. <laughs> Alejandro says, I insist you've been hacked by the, the Geeks head developers. Nah, probably not. Case is coming at us, coming at us live from uh, XMPP through IRC through Twitch. That's a lot of bridging. I know you're just joking, man. Don't worry. That's what we do here. We just joke around. Why not? You know, it's fun. We're having a good time here. There's no reason there can't be a little bit of uh, humor injected into things. Especially because it's Friday, right? You know, it's a good day for, for a little bit of joviality, if that's a word. Uh, let's see. Just checking if there's anything worth uh, mentioning in the chat here. Okay, cool. Hello to Sasha also. And Karen the person. Uh, Karen the person says, you're doing stru structural lisp editing. You know about parent parentfer, right? Yes, I use parentfer for a long time. Um, <laughs> I, I thought parentfer was alpha. It, has it never left alpha? It's been around for what, like eight, nine years? Anyway, uh, we'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, first of all, I wanted to go through the updates. So um, tomorrow is uh, Ludum Dare 51. So the, the, twice a year, there's this game development competition where people join together and try to implement a game within a weekend. And I did this in, I think it was April or May last time, and I had a lot of fun. So I'm gonna be doing it again tomorrow, uh, tomorrow, well, Saturday and Sunday this weekend, basically. So if you're interested in you know, seeing me write a game using Scheme or my own main language called Mesh, which is basically Scheme with some changes, uh, jump on over to the uh, Flux Harmonic Live channel on YouTube uh, or also uh, twitch.tv slash Flux Harmonic Live. Um, I'm going to be streaming starting around um, 6 a.m. EST. Let's, let's see what time that is around the world. So 6 a.m. EST. So uh, bu -bu -bu -bum. Athens time to EST. No, I want to see what the world time is. Come on, world time. We need to figure out what this is. Well, let's let's look up uh, UTC at least. Or in fact, you know, let's just do something better. Let's use world clock in Emacs because I already have some stuff hooked up here. So that's going to be uh, three thirteen. No, sorry, twelve hours from now, right? So, <laughs> uh, no, yes, twelve hours. I got no time left, right? Uh, so that means uh, three thirteen a.m. UTC or 3 a.m. UTC, uh, what would that be in? So uh, 8 p.m. Uh, Pacific, and then New York, it's uh, 11 p.m. Uh, Eastern. Anyway, so point being, 
time zones are uh, complicated, but uh, I'm gonna be starting early in the morning for me at least so that maybe some of the people from the US side of things can, can join in. Uh, we'll, I'll be doing one stream from six to 10. So 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. Um, and a second stream from uh, 2 p.m. to 6 p.m., I think, if I'm not mistaken about that. It might be 1 p.m. to 5 p.m., but we'll see, uh, E-E-S-T. So um, two streams, four hours each. Gonna try to, to make a game from scratch. Uh, probably gonna be like a text adventure type thing because you know doing graphics and everything takes a lot more effort, but let's, uh, let's see what we can do with that. Um, I've added a lot of interesting things to Mesh over the last two or three weeks. Uh, the limited continuations and uh, the beginnings of the meta object protocol. Like I can actually define classes and methods now, but it's not fully working. I didn't get time today to finish it. So maybe I'll have to finish a little bit, a bit of it on the stream tomorrow. We'll see, but it should be a lot of fun. I think it'll try out some new things, try to implement uh, channels and well, I already have channels and uh, co-routines implemented. So we're going to try to use that to build a simple game engine for a X adventure. So we'll see how that goes. Um, and uh, also, if you're interested in checking out more about the Ludum Dare, Ludum Dare event, you can go to the ldjam.com website. They have more information there. Uh, also, uh, if you want to support the channel, check out the book Mastering Emacs by Mickey Peterson. This is a cool thing that Mickey did to, to help support the channel here. Uh, he basically made it so we have an affiliate link so that if you buy a copy of the book Mastering Emacs, a part of the sale goes to support the channel, which I'm very thankful for. A lot of people have already uh, took advantage of this already, and I really appreciate all of you who have done that so far. Um, it, it's a great book. He says a lot of things about Emacs that we haven't gotten into on the channel. And uh, also he updates it every time there's a new major release of Emacs. So you're investing in future knowledge and updates uh, if you buy a copy of that book, which is great. Also wanted to point out that uh, Jeff Bowman has contributed a, a, a mastering Emacs module to crafted Emacs. And I thought he was joking at first because, you know, it's funny to say that, oh, I'm making a mastering Emacs module, but he actually did it. And uh, effectively it's a module that um, sets up a configuration that uses some of the things that are discussed in the book. So if you're interested in seeing what type of things are discussed in the book, you can check out this module that Jeff wrote that sets up some of the settings or uses some of the packages that are, that are discussed in the book uh, to sort of take a look at that. Um, I think I should just go ahead and, and merge this. I mean, why, why, why even wait? Jeff asked me to review it. This is my review. I'm just going to click approve and then merge it. Or maybe I'll let Jeff merge it. But uh, anyway, it's approved, Jeff. So go ahead and merge that freely. But I just wanted to point that out in case you want to try with, uh, try to experiment a little bit with a configuration based on the book. Um, let me see if I have missed anything in the chat here. Uh, let's see. Adam Fighter says, I found out there is a CLS, CLOS book out here. Well, uh, there is, if you mean uh, the art of the meta object protocol, but there's also another book. Um, I forgot what it's called, but there is there is a book specifically on CLOS. I think it's also from the '90s, I believe. All the good books and uh, articles about Scheme and Lisp seem to be from the '80s and '90s. I mean, there's some earlier stuff than that, but like there's a lot of solid material out there in the academic space about uh, Lisp and Scheme from the '90s. So I don't know. I feel like I've I've missed the the boat in the like you know the grand days of of Lisp adventuring, uh, which, you know, that's not so bad because maybe we can bring it back. Maybe we can just have a lot of fun writing a Lisp code for our configurations and also for uh, for applications. We'll, we'll do a lot more with that. Hello to uh, Skiamakos. Let's see. Adam Fighter, Adam Fighter says, yes, good stuff was in the 80s and 90s. And Def B says, I felt like this about Django literature. Best stuff was pre-2015. Yeah, Django was kind of like the hot thing. What year was that? Feels like it was around 2006 or 2007 when Django came out and uh, it was like the new hotness. I still can kind of visualize the website from back in those days. Skamako says, I found something par edity the other day in OSX. Uh, control right and control left arrows switch spaces so that uh, interferes with par edit. Uh-oh. That's annoying. All right. So let's uh, jump into the topic, which is uh, very unprepared, but uh, that's sort of the point. Because I'm going to be learning how to use um, a par edit today. or We're all going to be learning how to use it. And those of you who do know how to use it, please feel free in the chat to be shouting out things that I do wrong or things that I should try. Uh, but 
This is a long-standing and venerable uh, structural editing package for Lisp coding. So one of the interesting um, implications of having a language that has a very regular syntax, like the S expressions in Lisps. Uh, let me be more specific about that. Let me jump to my configuration really quickly. Let's go to uh, .emacs and knit.el. So in a Lisp language, um, all of the expressions of the language are wrapped in parentheses. And the way that everything is organized is such that you have just nested expressions uh, in, you know, with print, delimited by parentheses with uh, atoms or lists uh, inside of that. And because everything is organized in that way, it's much easier to do something called structural editing, which basically means just taking chunks of code and moving them around however you want. So um, there are a number of packages out for Emacs and other editors that make it easier to deal with code that's structured like Lisp code. So being able to move around uh, various uh, forms, like for instance, I'm, I'm using Lispy right now. I'm not really gonna talk much about Lispy, but uh, if I wanted to move this form around, I could use, uh, I think it's Alt and J. I'm just sort of moving this whole thing around. I don't have to cut and paste. I can just sort of uh, treat it like it's an, an object and just sort of move it around. You can switch things around like that. So um, that's sort of the idea of structural editing. Since your code has a very consistent structure, unlike a lot of other languages that have curly braces and you know different syntax for different things like statements versus expressions, uh, you can more easily um, do interesting navigation and editing techniques on the code itself. So uh, one of these packages that's been around for a long time is called paredit. And uh, there is a, I think a pretty complete, well, not complete, but a, you know, a good wiki page on the Emacs wiki uh, that talks about it. And there's also um, the repository. This is sort of like relatively old package. So I don't know how much work is being done on it these days. It's sort of being, you know, maintained, but oh no. Okay, there was a little bit of work in July and you know, not so much, but th that's the thing is like some of these older packages, they do one thing, they do it well, they don't have to be updated because they just keep working. So um, there's also another tutorial called the Animated Guide to Par Edit that I keep running across every now and then, uh, which kind of gives you a clearer way to see uh, what these commands do and how the code gets affected by it. So we might take a look at this a little bit to see uh, what we can learn from it. But the idea is that we're gonna try to uh, use this package today and learn how to uh, edit code structurally using it. Now, there are other packages that you probably would wanna know about, like let's say, um, uh, let's see, other similar packages. And also shout them out in the chat if you know others that I'm not mentioning. So Parenfer, uh, Lispy slash Lispyville. I know there's others. There's also uh, smart parens, but I don't know if that actually does structural editing or if it's just like uh, parenthesis management. Uh, Gavin says, I love par edit, but I dislike that it uses uh, meta S. That's interesting. And uh, Kay says, I definitely unbind meta S. Well, I don't really know what meta S does. Let's see, uh, control HK meta S. Ah, so it's a, it's a prefix for something. Let's do uh, control H. Oh, come on. Uh, control H, K, meta S. I thought control H was supposed to pull up, um, what's it called? Embark for me. Unwrap, okay. Um, Def B says, par edit plus Lispy do go nice together, but Lispy turns a keyboard into a landmine at first. Yes, that's the problem that I have with Lispy, is that um, I'll be typing away happily doing the kind of operations that I need to do. But then I just happen to hit a key in the wrong location and it just completely flips out and changes the code or puts a lot of things all over the annotations all over the buffer. So, eh, I don't know, it's it's useful, but I'm, you know, considering other options. <clears throat> uh, Kay says, meta S is actually a searching prefix. Okay, cool. Uh, Avir says, Cymex. Cymex was uh, a ah oh, okay interesting an evil way to edit Lisp symbolic expressions uh, as trees. Okay, let me start that one because I have not seen this before. Cool. 
I'll take a look, take a look at that one. I think I'm, whoops, I'm thinking of another pa package for, whoa, I turned off uh, evil mode. So uh, what's it called, Cymex. What is the, the package I'm thinking of? There's another, um, it's like a status monitor package that has a similar name to this, but I can't remember what it was, <clears throat> excuse me. My voice is cracking, apparently I'm turning uh, 14 years old now. Puny is another one. Uh, so Puny Emacs. Structured editing, soft deletion. Cool, haven't heard of that one at all. See, this is the nice thing about these streams is that uh, people just tell me about things I haven't heard about. Maybe I should actually put the links in, huh? At least the ones that we run across. We're not gonna look at these in depth right now. We might actually try a couple of them afterward. If uh, we have time, I mean, it's not like a super complicated package, so it probably won't take a whole lot of time to go through the functionality. So we'll just see. Smart parens is a, is a minor mode for uh, Emacs that deals with, with pair and pairs and tries to be smart about it. Probably not necessary with, when using something like um, par edit, but uh, this also has the benefit that it's useful in other languages. So it could be useful for people. I'll just copy the link here. I've always set up smart parens and I don't, don't think I ever use it correctly. So I'm not the person to ask if uh, you want to know about how to use it right. This is what happens when I don't prepare. I just have to like, you know, write the show notes in real time. I've already got, oh, okay, let's see. Our infer is an, an, an interesting one because um, there was an implementation made by Sean LeBron a long time ago. And then I think they redid it. And, oh, why is it archived? Ah, right, okay. So they have like a Rust backend now. There's some Rust program that takes care of it, which I guess makes it faster. I don't know. To me, it just seems like it um, makes things less uh, reliable because you have a secondary process that has to work on your system to uh, use it correctly. Gavin says, smart parens is the one that's more general, but offers every binding from uh, smart parens in every language. Yeah, that could be pretty useful for me, actually, since I'm, I work with uh, JavaScript and TypeScript uh, for part of the day, which is not my favorite thing in the world, but you know, gotta get paid. Caleb says, love your work. I'd shoot some support your way if I could, but I'm a broke college student. You know, if you're a broke college student, just saying that, that you enjoy my videos is, is enough. You don't have to, to like help financially or anything like that. Uh, the, the, all of us, uh, or all of the people who are making, you know, the the programmer salaries can uh, can do what they want to do. Uh, Alejandro says, "I see some good use to par edit on refactoring code, but not much more." Well, it it helps. Like if you're trying to move forms around and stuff, it kind of does make things a little bit faster. But I never get to a level of you know, elite proficiency with any of these tools, even like, you know, evil mode. I, I, don't, I don't get too far out of the sort of day-to-day -day regular editing stuff. As you can see, I do a lot of really dumb editing things sometimes on videos and streams. That's mainly because I'm so like focused on whatever I'm working on that I don't spend the time to actually like practice uh, the packages that I use. Def B says, Rust is coming for everything. Yeah, well. I'm not gonna use it. I, I'm gonna be the, the one stick in the mud. It's like, you know what? I don't need Rust. I'm gonna keep writing things and see. See how you like it then. You know, people wanna say uh, that uh, you know you should only use a safe systems programming language. Yeah, it's, it's great to do that. If you write code that is very security sensitive or maybe very, you know, memory usage sensitive, but yeah, it's, it's more fun to write C. You know, it's more fun to have a foot gun. I uh, I like, you know, having seg faults in my code and using tools to figure out what the problem is. I kind of like uh, debugging really weird issues. I learn things from that, you know? It actually makes me smarter. So if you have a, a language that prevents you from making mistakes, it's great if you don't want to be spending time di diagnosing things, which if you're trying to like, you know, write code for a job, it probably is a lot more helpful. But for personal projects, I don't really need anyone hand-holding me, I would prefer to, you know, slice my own fingers off and then figure out how to reattach them, so. 
That's just my uh, personal preference. <laughs> Alejandro says, Rust is coming for my health. I get rustier every day. Yeah, me too. I don't know, man. I'm about to turn 40, so what can I say? Gavin says, I use par edit, but puny right now. Uh, constantly, I use its bindings more than, uh, than anything else when programming these days besides searching. Gavin also says, have you looked at Guy Steele's proposal for a systems level lisp? I have not. Did he actually have something for that recently? I know that uh, uh, Christine, can't remember her last name, uh, was talking about something called Guile Steel. Oh, is that the one you're talking about? Guile Steel? Yeah, that, that was a, a play on Guy Steele's name, but it's Guile Steel, which is sort of like a, an effort to make a... Um, man, the, the name is right on the tip of my head right now. Yes, thank you, Case. It's uh, Christine Limmer Weber. Uh, anyway, she, she came up with a proposal for like having like a systems programming scheme or sy systems programming list, but, which I've been thinking about for a long time myself, but I don't know. Like, I've, I think I've... Mm, I've, I've changed my perspective a little bit on that, and uh, I have different type of things that I, that I want to work on. Okay, I've been talking a lot. Let's actually try to get into doing the thing that we're here to do today. So, uh, I wanted to try this out with uh, Crafted Emacs, but I have not actually updated Crafted Emacs on this machine in a while. So, we're going to find out real fast whether... Uh, it's going to be a problem. So Emacs profiles, let's see. Yeah, that tells you how long it's been because I still call it rational here. Crafted. Crafted Emacs. And then R crafted. There we go. And I don't know that I actually have it in that folder. I might just go ahead and um, pull it down brand new. See, crafted. No, I do not have it here. So let's do that. I'll go into eShell, CD projects code. Whoa, 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 whoa. There you go. Get clone. Uh, system crafters crafted Emacs. Ah, great. Sometimes I have issues when I boot up this machine where it doesn't want to uh authenticate me correctly let's try to pull this oops this doesn't work as fine there we go cool all right so now maybe i can do the uh, the clone correctly there we are okay now let's go back to crafted emacs and I should just be able to run it, I think. Emacs with profile crafted. Let's see what happens. Run it. There we go. Yes, my rational Emacs has some rust and dust on it. That's true. Case says, wait, not scheme? What are we talking about there? I love scheme, dude. I, I tell you what. Whoa, I haven't seen this before. This tells you how long it's been since I actually used Crafted Emacs. I haven't seen the dashboard screen that uh, Jeff put together. Um, let me fix this situation. I'm going to go to, let's see, big, uh, rational. I'm going to copy that over to, uh, no, let's just rename it. Rational, rename, Crafted Emacs. Wait, what? Must have created it already. Kill it. Delete this folder. Yes. All. Yes. All right. Rational. Here we go. Let's uh, rename this guy uh, to Crafted Emacs. And is everything else copacetic? I bet money I'm going to have a lot of problems. Oh, boy. Here we go. Rational. Crafted. This is going to be a nightmare. So maybe, um, let me see if I can just get some stuff out of here. Oh, this is when I was trying to con convert my configuration. I don't want to delete all this. Crafted defaults, crafted UI, crafted evil, crafted completion. This is probably all fine. Now we're going to try it again. Expect some crashes. That's right. Okay, now it's going to install some packages. Packages. 
system scheme. Yes, it has to be system scheme. Scheme is the language for uh, for this kind of thing, in my opinion. But uh, back to what I was saying about scheme. I uh, have been, you know, reading a lot of papers on scheme recently. Many of them by uh, uh, Arkent Dybvig, who is the author of Shea Scheme. That guy writes some excellent, excellent papers. Like really interesting stuff. Um. And uh, I've also been reading his book, uh, The Scheme Programming Language, and it just like, it really drives home just the elegance of Scheme as a language. It's just incredible, like, uh, what that language enables you to do. I just, I, I'm, I'm fascinated and obsessed with it. And uh, uh, Jeff says, you remember there was a script that would have done that for you. Yeah, I probably should have done that, right? Okay, so can I op load open file at CLJ refactor? I don't, don't really care, but I don't know if it's a problem. Where did that even come from? All right, so let's just get to it. Um, I'm going to pull up the config slash crafted emacs slash uh, what am I looking for? Config.el. I need to turn off evil mode. Evil. Let's actually do this. Crafted completion, crafted project. Ugh. I don't want to have to pull up all of this stuff. All right, let me kill this and start it again. Uh, Drew Verley says, there's also evil clever parens, which uh, uses functions uh, from both smart parens and par edit, and is the default list mode installed on space max. I'll have to look at that one too. Let me pull that up here in org. What's it called? Evil dash clever parens. That one might be more appropriate for me since I'm using evil style editing um, most of the time. Modal editing optimized for lisp like languages. Put that in right there. Okay. What's going on with this guy? All right, so CLG refactor, whatever. As long as I can, whoops, all right. Now I gotta remember the uh, built-in key bindings for closing windows. Give me a break, okay. So uh, the idea is to go into, yeah, I'm gonna have real trouble here. <laughs> Once again, when I don't have my comfortable key bindings, uh, I start uh, making a lot of mistakes. That's okay. We'll go down the bottom. And I'm going to pull in, am I using straight here? Straight, use, package, uh, par edit. Okay, so apparently I'm not using that. So we're going to use package install instead. I'm not using straight. Nope. Whoop. It would help if I spelled it correctly. Ah. I'm so acclimated to uh, evil mode. All right, it's already installed, really? Oh, I bet it's set up in one of the uh, packages already. Yes, thanks, Alejandro. I'm having a lot of trouble here. Eh. Okay. Crafted uh, package install. Yeah, yeah. So apparently it's in here already. I wonder. Can I use RG? Consult RG? No. Consult grep. Um, I'm looking for par edit. It's already in here. Not there. Okay. At any rate. Man, home key is not working. Okay, so uh, let me check. We have par edit commands. All right, par edit mode. Minor mode for pseudo structurally editing list code. It says pseudo structurally. I don't know if I believe that it's pseudo. I think it is real, but you know, who am I to say or to tell the uh, authors what their thing is? Uh, Synchro says, what is your opinion on alternative keyboard layouts like Dvorak or Colmac? Uh, for me, I just, I can't uh, bring myself to try them. I understand why they might be better because QWERTY was just designed so that typewriters wouldn't jam, or at least that's what I've been told. Uh, 
Um, but, you know, whenever you have to use keyboards in different places and you have to like worry about, you know, your muscle memory and uh, getting everything set up everywhere the correct way, I just don't want to have to deal with that. I mean, it's not for me, really. I know a lot of people who, well, I don't know a lot of people. I know some people who swear by Colmac and I've known people to use Dvorak over time, but uh, never has been something that I wanted to do. Let's check out, um, is there any docs here? Of course not. Let's check, check out even paredit.el and maybe there's some explanation on usage patterns, but maybe not. Okay, so the par, ed, par edit minor mode, maybe this is in the, um, here, let's look, info. Is there par edit and in info? Uh, find library, par edit. Let's look at it this way. There's no reason to go look at a silly website. Uh, Skiamako says, Query, Query was, Pretty was designed to slow you down, but I think it'd be slower on Dvorak without having actual keycaps in that layout. Yeah, well, I, I know that a lot of people who have custom keyboards will, will actually put that layout uh, on the keys so that they can see it. So, let's see. Customize. I don't really need to do that. Start par edit mode on the fly or always en enable it in a major mode. M. Oh, yeah, sure. Fine. Add hook. We know that. All right. So in the par edit minor mode, par edit mode binds common character keys such as blah, blah, blah to commands that carefully insert S expression structures in the buffer. So when you're typing code, it will automatically complete the uh, parentheses. Uh, so it leaves a point in the middle, moves a point over the next closing delimiter. Yeah. Okay. So, man, you can see. Wow. What did I just do? I hit Control Z. Fantastic. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Do, how many Emacs do I have open here? Only the one. Great. Okay. Sorry, folks. You know, dealing with a little bit of uh, annoyance occasionally here. Alejandro says, I use Dvorak in Emacs and I have come to use it as is, no re not rebinding a thing. That's uh that's that's bold. You know, I need to um, prevent this thing from setting in any, any other editing modes up. <laughs> Alejandro says, I've been using Dvorak for over 20 years and I have no regrets, and my keyboard is in encrypted according to my wife. Well, I mean, the way that I use my computer. You know, if anybody stole my computer, they would have no idea what to do with it. So it's kind of a, you know, an insurance policy having a weird computer configuration or a keyboard layout. Okay. Let's go back to is it recent F mode on recent F. Uh, ah, whatever. Okay, so par edit mode. In fact, we'll go down. I forgot in the key binding to go to the end of the buffer because I don't have uh, evil mode on. I think you know what I may I may have to just turn on evil because I can't uh, I can't function without it apparently. And also my key bindings are not set up. That doesn't work either. Fantastic. At least that works. Okay, one more restart. I know. I could have just evaled the, the code. Whatever. Synchro says Emacs, an operating system with built-in encryption. Yeah. Gavin says, I realize that a lot of the reason I use par edit so much is because I don't use evil anymore. It helps fill the gap. Yeah, definitely. I mean, having some kind of uh, code navigation or... or Buffer navigation packages are pretty essential, regardless of whether it's um, evil or something else, like Avi. Even Avi is pretty badass. Um, I don't really use it enough, but Avi is a cool package. Uh, if you haven't heard of Avi before, yeah. 
basically it's a package that you know allows you to um, say I want to jump to a word and then it just gives you overlays where you can jump to pretty much anything you see on the screen so if you, you just type kh to jump to this location so you don't really need you know fancy evil key bindings if you have a package like this where you can really just jump around to whatever you need uh, instantly. All right, here we go. One more time. Maybe now I won't be uh, suffering. Okay, config.el. You'll see how much better I use my computer now that I can actually uh, use it. So par edit mode one. Let's just turn it on by default. Okay, cool. Now, uh, we're gonna go back to find library. Uh, par edit just to take a look at that uh, set of notes here so we will uh, split the screen Ugh. maybe I can move the text scale down a little bit text scale adjust let's decrease it a little bit okay that's better and then we'll go back to config.el now uh, they say that uh, this will uh, automatically complete Parentheses for you. I'm guessing that par edit's doing that. Let's actually check that by using control H. Hey, we'll do that. Uh, control H K. Yeah, okay. I'm in insert mode and I have the control H key binding. Fantastic. Um, if I look up par edit insert, which command is it? So they've got bindings on all the characters. Uh, control H K. Yeah, in this prop. Uh, eh. This is why it's a problem to try to mix evil with other uh, keyboard modes because uh, things don't work the way they're supposed to. And I don't know who is actually got the binding for uh, parenthesis right now. So it says that it will do uh, anything like uh, square brackets or uh, uh, parentheses. Uh, angle brackets, it will do if you set up a particular binding, but it doesn't do it, do it by default. But you know you don't really see those very often you know, as delimiters in Lisp languages, thank God. Only for like types that get re repeated back. Um, let's see, prompts for the characters who escape. So if I put slash, ah, okay. So it actually is actually working. So if I wanted to, um, wait, what? Not inside a list? Fine. So if I wanted to escape a paren, do that. All right, cool. And also, if you are outside of a list, you can hit delete. Okay. Interesting. It doesn't delete them at this level, which probably is okay. That's one thing I like about Lispy, though, is I can just sort of delete things really easily, like delete whole forms. Uh, I use that quite often, actually. But if you're inside a paren, let's see, test, and you delete the paren, what happens? Okay, so it doesn't let you because you're at the beginning of an actual list that has been filled in. But if you delete the characters, then it will let you delete it. So you can't do it that way, but they have other commands for that. So let's take a look. Um, in comments, these keys insert themselves. Uh, these key bindings are designed so that when typing code in par edit mode, you can generally type exactly the same sequence of keys you would have typed without par edit mode. Uh, also binds common editing keys such as del, control D, control K to commands that respect S expression structures in the buffer. So let's, uh, let's try that out. So control D. All right, so it's sort of um, deletes, whoops. Let's see, if I'm hitting, hitting control D here, it doesn't delete anything. What about before list? If I delete that, yeah, it doesn't delete anything. And then it starts deleting the, the symbol and then it can start deleting parentheses. So it, it prevents you from deleting things by accident, which can be nice, I guess. Uh, control K is what, killing a line, I guess. Whoops, I'm trying to undo, there we go. So control K, okay, control K is delete to end a line, that's right. So if I hit control K, control K, okay, so uh, list one, two, three, four. I can jump right here and say control K and delete those two things. Gotcha. What about uh, sub expressions? So one, two, uh, three, four. As you can see, I'm just figuring this out uh, as I go. So if I hit control K, okay, it will actually delete those things, which is cool. 
and then uh, anything else. If I delete the whole thing, it does work. Okay, cool. So then, um, delete deletes the previous character unless it's a delimiter. Del will move the point backward over a closing delimiter and will delete a delimiter pair altogether if if between an open and closing delimiter. So basically, if you are in between a delimit two delimiters with nothing else in there, it will delete the delimiters, which makes sense. Control delete, control D deletes the next character in the same manner. Control K kills all S expressions that begin anywhere between the point and the end of the line or the closing delimiter or enclosing list. So let's actually try this. Um, let's put these on multiple lines. What if I go up here and press uh, control K? Okay, so it does sort of join the lines together. So you could do some, you know, useful editing with that. If necessary, you can delete a character or kill a line, irrespective of S expression by pressing Control U. So if you use the universal key, um, it will allow you to do whatever you want. So if I were to press Control U, Control K, then you can delete the whole line. Okay. Uh, oftentimes you need that. You need a, the ability to um, do an edit even though they don't want you to. Now, one thing that I had a lot of problems with with Parinfer is that whenever I would do this kind of editing and the buffer would get into a state where the parentheses were unbalanced, it would totally flip out and not do anything else correctly. <laughs> so it gets really annoying. Uh, Rudolph says, uh, normally to delete a list from inside of it, you would go uh, up using control meta U and then kill the expression control meta K. So I think that's like built in stuff. Uh, there's actually a really good um, blog post by uh, Da Ran Liu. I know that I'm not uh, going to pronounce his name correctly, unfortunately. I think that's, his, that's the way to pronounce. Uh, Emacs Structural. Yeah, Liu. Okay. And where was that? Okay, that's, that's their Twitter account, but maybe... Oh, boy. Twitter is such a cesspool. What can I say? I use it. So, um, they have a very good blog post about the built-in. Where is it? Structural editing of vanilla Emacs. This is actually a really good post uh, that it will teach you how to use um, just the built-in commands, which I also want to try at some point. I would like to try to like you know wean myself off of evil again, but uh, you know never really goes all the way here. So uh, vanilla structural editing in Emacs. There's another post you can take a look at. Okay. So then uh, what, uh, let's see. What Rudolph was saying is that um, in the normal commands you use in Emacs, control meta U will move you up to the higher level uh, structure. Like here, if I put my character here, my cursor there and put a, a control alt U, I'll jump outside. So yeah, it just jumps you up to uh, the outer expression. So control meta U and then control meta K will kill the whole thing. So that's pretty useful in its own way. So if you don't wanna have to use a package, then, you know. Uh, see you later, Jason, thanks for joining. It's 2 a.m. there. Must be you. Must be somewhere on the. Wow, where are you? <laughs> Let's see. Uh, uh, Def B is is referring to uh, Karthik's post. Uh, batteries included with Emacs. Probably it's mentioned there also. So Karthik batteries included. Yeah, this is also a great post that will tell you a lot of things you probably didn't know about Emacs. Let me see, uh, structural, no, control, meta, U, no, maybe it's in another one, but anyway, these posts are great. Um, okay, back to the point. So, so part of mode binds some keys to complex S expression editing operations. For example, control right makes the enclosing list slurp an S expression to its right. So this is some of the stuff that ends up being pretty useful. So let's say um, you have like a, uh, uh, let's see, 
let's see, format. Uh, list one, two, three, uh, four, five, six. I don't know. And I'm going to try to delete this whole little thing here. Oh, that's pretty nice, actually. I mean, you just hit the backspace key and it just does everything for you uh, in a very simple way. All right, so I have this list set up here and it says control right. So if I use control and the right arrow key, whoa, okay, that did not do what I expected. Okay, so it's barfing. <laughs> control left is barfing three out. So if I press control right, oh no, what's happening? <laughs> okay, so now it's slurping. It's eating the things to the left. So, all right, so uh, keycast. Can I turn on keycast mode here? Damn, it's not going to work. All right, so what I'm doing, uh, the next key that I'm going to press is uh, control uh, right arrow. When I do that, it moves the, the outer parenthesis to after whatever's next to it. And if I use control left, we'll move that, that paren of this, this form uh, back. So I can sort of put the paren in or out of things. But then if you happen to put the paren before where your cursor is and you start doing the same thing, then it starts editing the other expressions around, which is a little bit dangerous in my opinion, because now I've, I've got my stuff unbalanced in a way that I'm, I'm not really certain of. If I uh, hit uh, indent S expression, is that, Put it back? No, because this needs to go away. So if I press uh, control left, yeah, not doing what I expect. And then you really get like out of track fast with that. Let me see if I can back it up. All right, there we go. So let's see. Um, Rudolph says, uh, part it handles that uh, control meta U and vanilla Emacs handles that control meta K. Okay. Yeah, Synchro says add a camera that points to your keyboard so you don't need to worry about keycast mode. It would be nice. I don't know. Primogen does that. I think it's uh, you know adds more noise to the visuals of the stream, but it, it is kind of useful. Rudolph says the default par edit key bindings nicely complement the default Emacs key bindings. Yeah, I, I see that that's sort of like a, a a selling point is that it doesn't really disrupt you, which I can't say for things like Lispy where you turn it on and everything just goes wacky. <laughs> That's the point, but you know. Okay, let's look at this little example here. So we have uh, foo, bar, boz, quux, and the cursor is here between bar and boz. You press control right, and then it eats, it slurps the quux into the expression. Okay. K says, I, then David would have to fix his hands. Yes, I would. Like, I'm having a real hard time uh, typing recently. I think I'm not getting enough sleep. Some part of the commands, uh, automatically in re-indent code okay when they do they try to indent as locally as possible that's also a benefit where if you're moving things around if it automatically re-indents for you then you don't have to worry about going and like using uh, indent s expression or indent region to fix it uh, that's another thing i really like about packages like lispy or uh, parent for where um, it will make your code look good no matter what you're moving around uh, only the advanced S expression manipulation commands automatically re-indent only, and only the forms that they immediately operated on and their subforms. Yeah, that's fine. What else? Okay, that's all that it, the description you get in this one. So let's actually take a look at the other thing that I had shown, the animated guide. <laughs> Kyoto says, uh, real programmers don't use arrow keys. Yes, we, we use the power of our brain to just stare at the screen long enough until the, the cursor moves into the right position. All right, so four opening functions, which we saw already. If you type in uh, open paren, it, it completes it for you. Um, closing and indenting. So if you close, it will move the cursor past the next closing a delimiter and also indent. So let's actually take a look at what that means. If I were to, I'm back in evil mode again. Here we go. All right, control Z to Emacs mode. Uh, I'm gonna delete some things a little bit here. Also, um, hmm. I'm gonna mess up the indentation a little bit. I'm gonna press uh, close paren. Okay, it did, it did clean up this line a little bit, but it didn't actually 
indent anything correctly for me. Maybe that's the idea is that that doesn't really do it. But if I were to try to like uh, slurp or barf, like control left arrow, what's your problem? <laughs> it was working a moment ago. Ah. I'm pressing the wrong characters. This is what's happening, I'm telling you. Okay, so it did actually um, re-indent this whenever I slurped, so. That's cool. I'm going to drop this down and move it a little bit. I'm going to use control left arrow and then control right arrow. Cool. So it does actually re-indent whenever you move things around. In case says, I'm telling you, just control meta, uh, what is it, backslash or forward slash? Yeah. Let's uh, delete a little bit of stuff here. Control meta forward slash. Yeah, cool. Tell me which one I'm, I'm, I'm saying wrong. Backslash, thank you, Case. I need you guys around all the time so that you can just tell me what I'm doing wrong and I can just save myself some time. Okay, so next thing, quoting. Uh, Paredit creates, creates treats double quoting similarly to the opening and closing pairs of characters above. Okay, yeah. So if I were to put in a uh, quotation mark for a string, then it automatically closes it. And then if I am in the string and I press quotation mark, okay, it escapes it. Or if I'm here and press quotation mark, it just jumps over it. So it more smoothly manages quotation marks around. This is one thing that I sometimes have issues with in, uh, in Lispy because it really wants to force you to do quotation marks its way. I'm trying to think of what problem I often get myself into What if you use control right arrow here? Oh, look at that. That's really nice. So um, you can actually slurp something into a string. So let me try this. I'll get rid of uh, this whole part. Or I'll leave that there. How about this? I'll, I'll delete this part. Let me delete it, for God's sake. Control U. All right, select it all, right? Control U, then backspace. Nope, doesn't work. Control K, Control K, backspace, geez. All right, anyway, I wanted to uh, slurp with this uh, string. So I'm gonna use uh, Control right arrow. Okay, so it put the, put all that inside the string, which is cool. Control left arrow no longer works. It says it can't figure out what the context is. I'm gonna put the uh, cursor there and then, yeah. Okay, so it, it can't figure that out. If I try to delete the quote, it doesn't work. If I try to insert a new quote, what does it do? does that if I delete the the escape it deletes the character so that it's trying to save you from yourself but it actually does something that is annoying in my opinion control u quote no that doesn't work what about control q quote yeah okay that works at least so usually control q is your escape hatch uh in these packages but here it won't let me delete this quote character so control q backspace no nope. <laughs> uh control k uh no nope. I don't know what it even did then that was Funny. Okay. So how do you force it to allow you to delete something whenever stuff is uh, wrong? Del. No. So it told me something. Control U Del. There we go. Okay. So apparently you have to press Del. You can't use backspace. But if you use Control U, it will let you delete the uh, delimiter. So if I'm here. Control U Del. Okay. And then if I use quotation mark it tries to escape it because it thinks we're still in a string then i use control u del to get rid of the uh get rid of the escape character fine yeah it's it's consistent but also if you're just trying to edit a string sometimes it just is a headache all right so uh back to the ex examples Wrapping an S expression. So Parada has variants of all the above that open a pair automatically and wrap the following S expression into it. So uh, if you're on an atom, let's say if I'm on format here and I use uh, open paren. Okay, so it didn't do it then. So they have a string, they go back to the beginning of the uh, symbol. Yeah, it's not doing it for, for this, at least. 
So what about um, format and then jump to the beginning and press, yeah. So it's not doing what it says. I wonder if you have to bind these. Oh, there's some, what are they pressing? Meta? I see. Meta quotation mark, fine, okay. That actually makes sense. So meta quotation mark will turn that into a string anywhere. Okay, great. And then meta uh, paren will wrap it. If you just keep pressing it, it will keep wrapping it. Okay. I like that, it's fine. Control K, delete, 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 delete. Uh, deleting, like the open, close, and double quote keys, power edit also takes over the default key combinations that Emacs uses for deleting. So uh, control D and meta D. And then uh, control K. So yeah, you're just using like control D and it just deletes characters. But then it probably doesn't delete the last parenthesis because, oh, okay, so it, apparently it does. Uh, Piotr says, a trick to fix stuff. Insert a semicolon to force a comment, fix in there, and then remove the comment. Yeah, that can definitely work sometimes. Okay. What else do we have to see here? Slurping and barfing. It's great terminology. You know, like, there's a, in the, uh, the old Lisp community, there's all kinds of lovely terminology for various different things. Slurping and barfing and all the... Rob Nas kind of weirdness. Okay, so slurping is provided by a part of forward slurp S expression uh, bound to control uh, paren. I did not see that. So let's try um, control paren. Uh, whoa. Uh, control left paren, control right paren. That's not working. What is it supposed to do? watching this GIF. Okay, so it's supposed to work, but it's not doing anything for me. Use the shift, man. Can you see me doing that? Being really stupid? I tell you, like my brain is not working these days. Control shift, hey, look at that. And it totally just, screwed up the structure of my code. Fantastic. Okay, so I'm gonna use control shift uh, left paren. Yeah, so it, it serves the other direction. I use right paren. Okay, so what I would prefer, which I'm guessing if I were to use alt. Nope. Okay, it's not what I think. Let me see. Um, Forward barfing. Okay, so that's the curly brace. So if I were to use, uh, let's see, control shift and then nine or, you know, left paren, I can move it like that. But then if I use the curly brace character, it moves it back. I don't really like the lack of symmetry there. I mean, there's symmetry, but, you know, the, the position of the keys is a little bit annoying to hit. Oh, boy. I need some, some mods. Gavin, I'm making you a mod. If you can help me with the, uh, the, the porn spam that has showed up. Oh, I should have said the P word. Now that I'm going to be demonetized. Thank you, Gavin. I appreciate it. Okay, so uh, let's see. So the same thing with the, uh, okay, the control left and right, that's cool. So if I'm here and I were to do control shift uh, right paren, then it will just take in things below that. But if I, yeah, so it, that's the thing that, that, that bugs me a little bit with these. It's like, I don't know what's gonna happen when I start making various different edits and it, it just gets me into a really weird state. I think it's a thing where you have to use it enough where you get that muscle memory and you know exactly intuitively what's going to happen. MH Void says the YouTube bots are insane nowadays. Yeah. 
uh, they're bad, especially like the day after a stream, like on Saturday morning for me, I start getting sp spam like that on the comments. Uh, I don't know why. It's not like I'm talking about anything, you know, related to that type of topic here. Okay. So, next thing. Structural navigation. So this is a way that you can jump around a little bit. Uh, so control meta F, control meta B. So you can move forward and backwards inside of, a, of an expression. So if I were to jump to, like, let's say this location here, uh, control meta F. Okay, so it jumps me past things inside of the same overall expression. So, okay, so it, it will even jump out. But then you get out and you can't get back in. Maybe if you press, uh, nope, doesn't work like that. Two methods of uh, descent and ascent. So control meta D is probably what I'm looking for. So control meta D goes inside. Then you can use control meta F to go through. And then control meta U to go up. D, D. Okay, so yeah, it just goes through whatever the next nested expression is. Control meta U, and then control meta F. Control meta B. So if you wanted to easily like mark a whole expression, you could do control space and then, ah, I have control space met, uh, mapped to something else. Of course, um, let's see, mark. Set mark, set mark command. All right, so I set the mark and then I jump forward. And that selects the whole expression. Then I can even select more expressions like that. What happens if I hit uh, delete? Doesn't do anything. Of course not. So uh, forward again, forward again. Uh, control U. I don't think it likes backspace. And now I really screwed it up. Control space. Yeah, control space would work if I had it set up right. Okay. Uh, when you want to descend backwards, you can use uh, par edit backward down bound to control MP and to reverse that and ascend forwards, use par edit forward up. So it's basically the same as the typical Emacs navigation key bindings. Let's see, control alt uh, N. Why? Not, do a, not doing what I expect. I mean, where is it even going? <laughs> Yeah, that's very strange. It's, it's like jumping around the mark ring. Oh, unbalanced parentheses. Let's undo, 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 because I think I broke some stuff, apparently. Maybe that's why I can't navigate, because I can't figure out where it, what the hell? I'm pretty sure that's supposed to be closed. Not inside a list. Are you sure about that? Maybe, whatever. Splicing. Splicing is the act of removing the current S expression and joining some of the contents with the enclosing S expression. There are two splices that will kill the content of the current S expression either to the front or rear of the cursor. So uh, kill backwards with meta up. So let's see what that looks like. Oof. Right here. I'm going to use uh, meta up. So it deleted up to a given point and also remove the parentheses around that. I think that's the point there is that, that it's splicing the thing into the outer expression. If I would go here and press meta up, it just deletes the uh, parens around. What about meta down? Okay, well, it does the other thing where it deletes to the right side. Not really crazy about that. I'm not sure where that would be useful, to be honest, because you'd have to jump to the paren first and then um, meta down, but that doesn't do what you expect. You would want it to be inside of the paren and then press uh, meta down. Whoops, I guess what you would want it, that for is uh, if you want to unwrap an expression, but there must be another command for unwrapping. Unwrap, no, not here. What about uh, unwrap? No, I'll edit wrap, wrap. Okay, so there's not an unwrap? Huh. Yep, 
Yeah, P spam again, geez. <laughs> Every time David rings the bell in a session, it's real. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm, I'm making tons of mistakes. I'm, I hope it's not you know, annoying people to see the flashing constantly. I could turn off visual bell mode if necessary. Splice is unwrapped. Yeah, that's what I was sort of getting, but it also deletes things, which I'm not exactly sure I'm crazy about. Hey, Thomas. Unwrap is just splicing, yeah. I'm a user just like like just like the rest of you. Yeah, I'm I'm a bad user. I I'm making plenty of mistakes. All right, so convolute s expression. That's a fun one. Oh, meta cap s. So it splits or joins. Let's actually check that out real quick. So uh, meta cap s. Right. Okay, that's kind of useful. You sort of just interject delimiters somewhere. So right here, I can just take control meta S and boom, now it's two lists, which could be useful if you're like, you know, here in this list, and maybe you want to chop some of it out control shift S. Okay. Then you would have to obviously type in list there or something. Whoa. Go away. And then convolute. So let's see. There's probably not a binding for this. Oh, okay. <laughs> Meta question mark. All right. So the I think it just switches around. I think it's going to move format inside, if I'm not mistaken. So it's meta question mark. No, that just uh, ah it's because I didn't press question mark. I'm not pressing shift on my keys these days. Unbalanced parentheses. Check parens. Are you lying to me? I think you're lying to me. What what gave you the impression that this is unbalanced, friend? <laughs> okay. Whatever you say. Let's let's just run the command directly. Uh, par edit. Whoa. All right. So I think I turn on caps lock. That's probably why it's unhappy. So no, I'm still not working. Make sure I didn't set caps lock again. I have caps lock remapped. Holy crap. And it causes problems sometimes. It gets stuck. Okay, so um, I'm going to use uh, par edit uh, convolute s expression. Okay, so it's just the, the command. It doesn't like what I'm doing here. What if I'm somewhere else? So maybe like uh, defund something. Something it's uh it's really unhappy uh toggle debug on error convolute expression s expression backward up list up list am i in the wrong place for this to work two three okay uh okay so it works if uh if you're in an appropriate location in the code, apparently. So I'm inside this form. I run uh, alt question mark and it moves something else to outside. Now, I actually have seen cases where this can be useful. Typically it's whenever I have a, a kind of setup where like something I, I do sometimes in, in Lisp, I've been using a lot recently in Mesh, is um, I will have like a, oh, I'm trying to put a friend in here and it doesn't let me. Okay, here we go. Something like a, a debug function where I can say like, uh, here's a log message. And then I um, have like a value in there. So what I wanted to do is to, geez, more, more spam, uh, have, the value return, but still print out the value with the log message. So basically just pass this two value through this whole form. Maybe I want to move this to the higher level expression. So I think what I could do is use convolute to achieve a similar thing just to move it out. So if I use convolute, oh, wow. Okay. So it, it, it is dependent on the location, of the, <clears throat> excuse me, of the cursor. So let me undo that. So if I put it right here and say convolute, Boom. Okay, that's that would save me some time in certain cases. So to, to show you that again, 
what I what I want to happen right now is I want this debug here's a log message to actually move to the outer expression because like maybe I'm trying to just see what this value here is, but then I want to see what the whole expression is when I'm when I print it out. I use uh, alt uh, question mark and then it moves that whole debug thing outside of the expression. So um, that could be cool. That could be pretty useful for me, but I'm pretty sure that you know all the other tools like Lispy, et cetera, have that, but Lispy probably just makes it, you know, puts it somewhere where it, uh, <laughs> where you hit it by accident and you wonder what just happened, which is typically the case for what I see all day long. Ah, yes, Tomas also makes a really good point. Uh, convolute is useful for moving a let expression up a nesting layer. So let's actually try that out because I write a lot of, uh, let expressions and it, uh, It'd be useful to see that. So how would I delete this whole thing here? Is it like control alt K? Ah, there we go. Cool. So let's indent you a little bit here. Um, A3. Wow. And then uh, let's do another inner let maybe. Or mm, 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 plus two. We're going to do something really lispy here. So uh, B5, and then we're going to return uh, B here because it's the, the smart thing to do, right? Just create a new uh, lexical context or for a value you can just put directly. So if I wanted to move this let outside of the two, I could just use uh, control, sorry, alt question mark. And then maybe I want to do it again. Uh, question mark so it, it moves it outside so it basically just pushes what's ever there outside of the, the thing to the left maybe that's the easiest way to think about it so it's like a it's like a uh, barf but it uh, moves it or it moves everything before the cursor I guess you could say it like that um so Thomas says that smart paren is is just a more modern par edit. I don't know. We should probably try it because I think that it's not exactly the same thing. So uh, times two. If I were to use a convolute, let's see what what happens if I use convolute here. So uh, shift, sorry, um, alt question mark, moves that out. So yeah, that could be useful. And then do it again, do it again. That doesn't make any sense, but uh, you get the point. Probably for even more complicated expressions. So if I were to have, um, let's say a, another let B5, eh, I control K that, okay, cool. Then probably should not use arrow, whoa, shouldn't use arrow to get out of the paren. I need to use just paren to get out, enter, and then, um, uh, plus uh, three B, I don't know. So if I were here and I wanted to convolute that, it would move the whole let plus the uh, plus three B out, I think. Yeah, okay. So yeah, you basically just push whatever's before the cursor in that context uh, up a level in the uh, nesting. So uh, that's kind of nice actually. Alejandro says, I would prefer to mark from the opening print to the closing one. I think you could do that too, but uh, my mark is not set up correctly right now. Okay, so that's pretty much it for this blog post. And maybe that's all there really is to, to par edit. Let's check uh, the, the command list. I'm going to use... Um, I uh, embark to export the list of commands just to see what else we might be missing. So enable, disable, uh, add to next list. Add the X, S expression preceding the point to the list following the point. What does that even mean? All right, so list one, two, three. So the S expression preceding the point to the list following the point. So if I were to go list uh, four, five, six, Preceding the point. So if I were to use par edit, 
add to next list. I'm guessing the list one, two gets jumped over. Is it gonna work or is it gonna crash Emacs? Ah, okay. Hmm, that's not what I expected. And maybe the, they used the wrong word. They said preceding. But this is not pre preceding means before. But after is three. So if I have one, two, three here, add to next list. Not what I thought. Okay. So uh, add to previous list, uh, backslash, backward, navigation commands, backward delete. Close round, close square, convolute. Copy as kill, delete region, double quote. Focus on define, okay. Interesting. So if I'm here and I run uh, par edit focus on defund, it hangs. Okay, so it basically just uh, zooms the buffer to include the whole uh, definition. Forward, forward barf expression, forward delete, forward kill word. Okay, so there's a lot of stuff in there. You know, honestly, I'm kind of interested to see how far you can get with. Um, the built-in commands. We're gonna check out this uh, <clears throat> this blog post by Dalron. Cause I, I've enjoyed reading this. Actually, let's turn on this, uh, uh, give me the dark mode. There we go. May, hopefully this will work correctly. Cool. Cause I don't wanna be blinded by this page the whole time. I don't think you do either. So Dalron says, last time I switched from the Lispy Lispyville combo for structural editing S expressions in par edit for simplicity. However, I started to realize that I kept unbinding commands uh, because they were unnecessarily restraining. Still do premature paren clo closing with electric pair mode. <laughs> but the, the thread got them thinking, do I really want to have uh, balanced parentheses at all times at all costs? It, it is a headache sometimes. But also, if you do edit without something that automatically ensures that your uh, parentheses are balanced, then uh, you end up with problems more often than not. Uh, Gavin says puny might be a quick look. We can definitely try that because I think we got a little bit of time. I haven't heard of puny until just now, so uh, we will look at it. So let's see. The main problem it solves is to avoid uncompilable source files by accident. Okay, so uh, navigate S expressions. So if we were to use, well, let's turn off par, par edit mode. Uh, disable, disable par edit mode, okay. Man, why is it hanging every time I run a command now? Something's wrong. Okay, so I think it's a control meta D, control meta U, so no, nothing that special. Why is it not working for me? Oh, hold on. Because I have control U bound or evil mode. <clears throat> oh, control meta U, yes. My bindings are causing me problems, obviously. Uh, what if I go into... Man, I've really jacked up my config file too all this stuff I'm gonna go turn that off so where is it control meta u let's just not do that because I need to be able to use this key binding I only have that because I have control u bound to whoa control u bound to scroll up in evil mode save it quit there we go Once again, YouTube tries to ban someone for saying uh, S expression. So YouTube will hide a comment from Ed Bowler saying S X because it has the letters S E X in it, but it will not 
hide the comments of a obvious chat bot that is saying the same thing over and over again and using very obvious emojis. That is idiotic, man. YouTube, get it together. Come on. The most obvious spam is the one that is not blocked. I don't know why it keeps trying to like reinstall packages every time I start this up. Something's wrong here. Config, crafted Emacs, config.el. Okay. Chat sells, yeah. Thank you, Gavin. I appreciate the help. All right, so, uh, whoops. Let's turn off power edit mode. Let's go back to uh, disable power edit. Mm, okay. Apparently, I never got to that point in the uh, setup. So, um, we're going to try to use control meta U now. How's it still bound? There's no way. Turn it off. Strange. So it's supposed to be control meta U, right? Control meta D to go down. Does it bottom level, which is not Okay, yeah, fine. Control meta U, it's still like uh, using control U for that. It doesn't make any sense. I'm, I'm holding alt. Is it because I have uh, the setting on in evil? Control U, come on. Yeah, probably because I have this set. When I want to be able to type, I can't type. I have to restart Emacs to make that go away now, unfortunately. Try escape control U. Yeah, I could try that. Uh, Mason says, I don't think audio is working on your side. Um, I think people are hearing me, right? Let me know if you can hear me. While we wait for Emacs to uh, start up. Thanks, Alejandro. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Sometimes YouTube starts playing a video uh, muted. All right. So uh, let's go to config again. All right, now, maybe this time, things will work the way they're supposed to. Control meta U. Okay, maybe it's gonna work. So control meta D, control meta U. Still using control U, whatever. We'll continue with the other one. So control meta B, control meta A. So that's, uh, let's do control meta A is like beginning of, of line. So that sort of goes out. Control meta A will go to the beginning Control meta A, go to the start of the top level. Okay, wow, interesting. So if you want to jump quickly to the top level expression, like if I'm right here in this huge face remapping, uh, control meta A will jump all the way up to the defund, all right? And then control meta B goes backwards to the previous S expression at the same level. Control meta B, and it stops. Okay, that's cool. Oh, what? That behavior doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Control meta B, what's that bound to? Yeah, move backward across one balance uh, expression. So how does it make any sense that if I go here and press control meta B that it jumps Okay, so it's like the second, okay, okay, whatever. You're, you're in a, a uh, sort of a nested expression, you're on the second element, and then it happens to just jump to that uh, same level of element. So it's jumping to, okay, the second, all right. I mean, it's interesting, I'll, I'll give you that. 
I'm not exactly sure where I would use that, but that's something. Control meta F, 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 F. All right, so it does um, the symmetrical behavior with control meta F, okay? Yes, we're, we're looking at uh, plain Emacs bindings right now. What about this uh, first one here? So what was the binding I was using before? Control meta B, no previous S expression. But if I do it here, Yeah. What about here? No, that was B, right? Yeah, I'm not sure what the deal is with that. You're jumping through streams because you're inside strings. Okay, maybe maybe that's what's happening. The the logic is different on strings. All right, so go to the start of the top level S expression. Control meta E. Um, Control meta in, go to the next next S expression, previous. Okay, so if I am here, control uh, meta in, no next group. Control meta P, doesn't like that, does it? That can't be right. Control meta N for the next balance group of parentheses. Why wouldn't it go inside of those? Unless it's for like this situation. Is it for nested stuff? Where are we at? Let's go right. Uh, we need to go to a nesting. All right. Interesting. Hey, Fade. Yes, it's uh, it's definitely more Emacsy key binding setup, and uh, for me, it's just totally brain breaking. All right, well, that's definitely a post worth looking at if you want to know the vanilla way to do things. Let's go to what uh, Gavin suggested, which is um, puny, Emacs puny. Come on with the spam. I mean, like they're really just throwing it in there now. Be nice if I could, uh, you know what? Can I just ban this freaking user? Bye bye. Okay. So structured editing, soft deletion, blah blah blah. Let me see if I can jump in here. Package install uh, puny. Hopefully this is going to be relatively up to date. Okay. Can't you just write a script to auto delete those comments? I've tried to write uh, code that interfaces with the live chat, and. Um, YouTube has this concept of, of uh, tokens, and they run out real fast if you're constantly watching the live chat. So it's, I, I at some point was trying to make it so that I could pull the YouTube chat into Emacs so that you could see it in Emacs, but uh, it just didn't work out. All right, it says it supports many major modes out of the box. That's interesting. Parentheses universalistic. Uh, let's see. Comparison with other packages. Let me just jump down. Give me some examples here. Fill line softly in Emacs list code. Deleting while keeping parentheses. So if I start up a puny mode, I really shouldn't be deleting things in my Emacs configuration, but you know, let's just uh, live dangerously. If I go right here and start deleting. Hmm. Okay. So what if I use control K right here? Okay. What about here? Control K. Okay. So it, it, it keeps the balancing of parentheses. That's fine. Uh, control K. So, okay, it is puny. So we, we verified this actually is automate regenerating token. It's not about token. It's about your account, which means I would have to rotate like 10, 15 different uh, 
dev accounts and that's against the terms of service and I could get banned for doing that. So it's, it's not a matter of the token refresh. It's a matter of uh, them not them not giving you the um, number of requests you need to, to constantly pull the stream chat. All right, kill a line four, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so apparently it does work for other modes, which is kind of nice, actually, if, if uh, this does work, because I would like this in other uh, languages. Back or kill a word. All right, so like we'll delete from outside. So what if I do uh, right here? What's the key binding for back or kill word? Control backspace. Okay, control backspace. Okay, so it didn't pre preserve the um, quote. So control H, K, control backspace. Cider. So it, that did not get rebound. Uh, maybe it's a different command. Uh, puny backward kill word. Meta delete. Okay. Okay, so it does actually maintain the uh, uh, the quotation mark, which is good. And what Gavin says is it's basically smart prints without all the uh, custom code needed for various different languages. That sounds pretty good, actually. Okay, so let's undo these things. All right. Backward kill word, kill line. So if I, whoops, I were to kill the line with control K right about there. Yeah, it gets rid of stuff. I think I tried that already though, maybe. Okay, all right. What if I go up to a nested expression, like let's say right here, control K. Control K, control K. All right, so it's, it's inside this one, that's fine. I want it right um, here, maybe control K, control K. All right, cool. It's not bad. Uh-oh, there we go. Cross says, uh, what would be structural Lisp editing? Basically editing the structure of the Lisp code, not just you know deleting and inserting characters uh, without any respect to the structure of the code. So let's see. So it definitely seems we could use this on other modes, which I like. So it has some comparison with um, uh, paredit and Lispy. So paredit is a minor mode for structured editing of Lisp code, implements soft deletion, S expression, manipulating commands as Puny does. Uh, compared to paredit, Puny's pro supports many major modes, not only Lisp, and an API for defining your own soft deletion commands. That's kind of nice, actually. Uh, cons, Puny doesn't implement down lists, so it lacks commands that need to go into a list, like joining the S expressions before and after point. Many a part of this behavior is especially tweaked for Lisp, like inserting a um, paren will also insert a space before whenever it's proper. So like if you're right here and you press space, sorry, uh, open paren, it doesn't actually Indent, or insert a space for you. Uh, let me get out of this problem I just created for myself. It doesn't do auto closing of parens either, it seems. There's also electric uh, pair mode, which will do it for you. So there's some built-in functionality for that. Oops, so electric pair mode, turn that back off. Uh, Lispy is like par edit with shorter key bindings. It feels like modal e editing for Lisp. That means that the commands are faster to execute and easier to combine to form complex operations. This key binding design is the killer feature of Lispy. It's also the killer feature of your code because it would just kill your code. <laughs> Lispy also offers much more commands in par edit, focusing on faster movement, inline help, code evaluation. Yeah, I mean, there's some there's some benefits there, obviously. 
Uh, Gavin says, you are intended to use electri electric pair mode or whatever comes with the mode. Yeah, that makes sense. Smart Prince is par edit for all languages like Puny. It takes a different approach. Instead of making use of Emacs built-in mechanisms, it creates its own extensible machine for parsing pairs and extends it for many languages. Yeah, it basically seems like uh, it's a custom implementation. Maybe Puny is trying to use more built-in Emacs behavior. But who knows, you know, these things tend to accrete functionality and code over time. So maybe in the future, Puny will be also big. All right. So that one seems okay. I mean, there, there's some benefits to it. I think, uh, you know, someone could probably put together a pretty decent configuration using that. Uh, let's also try out this evil clever parens because I believe it will fit better with um, how I intend to use uh, my configuration since I'm very evil focused, very evil person. So make sure the evil is on. Okay, got that. I'm not gonna bother with those other key bindings at the moment. I'll just drop, uh, no. Package install uh, evil clever parens. Okay. Installed now. So evil, clever, okay, well, what's the, how do you turn it on? Okay, you require this uh, module or feature. And it seems like it just, um, ext whoa, what? I just installed it. Find library, evil, clever, what is going on? So, evil clever friends mode. Apparently, didn't get didn't get installed correctly. Check out. Um, I'm gonna do this a different way. Let's jump into my own Emacs config. Um, config crafted Emacs Elpa. Evil clever friends right there, and all the files are there too. So why isn't it actually showing up? Evil clever parens. Okay, let's let's restart Emacs. And while I do that, I'll go re-enable a couple things that I depend on. Let's see what this does this time. How many of these bots are there? You ban one, they come right back. Wow. Invalid read syntax. Well, I did some really nice uh, list structural editing in my config file. It'd be nice if it told me exactly where it was, but I guess we'll just use uh, uh, what you call it. Come on, get out of here. We will use a uh, check parens. Okay, well, Lispy is telling me something's wrong here. So check parens right about there, I think. Yes, that one. I, I need to get rid of this one. No, no, no. Cool. I think if I run check friends now, check friends, it seems happy. Okay. How many times am I gonna restart this Emac configuration that's broken? YouTube is a declining neighborhood. You know, it would be nice to stream somewhere else. But, uh, you know, the, the problem is that YouTube has the best infrastructure and, you know, if it pushes things in front of people. I would like to have my own kind of streaming infrastructure, have my own website for it. But uh, it would be very nice if I had a streaming site where I could stream and then the chat that's on the same page is coming from IRC and not from proprietary system so the people could just be in the chat on IRC and not uh, through like a UI on YouTube or Twitch but I guess Twitch is a little bit better on that but then I would have to like uh, pay for the streaming infrastructure and I don't think I really want to do that or host it yes 
suppose I could also use um, Odyssey for streaming, but I haven't tried that yet. I don't really know if it's reliable. What's happening? Ah, oh, great. So Emacs is just busy um, compiling things right now, apparently. Evil clever, pr clever Prance. This thing is not loading. Something's very wrong about that. Yeah, making my own streaming site by putting together uh, projects. Uh, that could be pretty fun. All you need is just an Nginx server, I think. Okay. It's really weird that uh, this doesn't load up correctly. What if I just go to the file and try to try to load it myself? So I'm gonna go uh, find library. Lever, yeah, that didn't work either. Something very strange is happening with this configuration. I'll go to dot config crafted emacs helpa uh, clever parens. Let's go into this file eval buffer. It's not getting added to the load path for some stupid reason. should be in there though, right? Like anything under the Elpa folder should be in the load path. Load path. Um, clever parents, yeah, it's not being added. Package system is not helping me out here. Def B says, Nginx and FFmpeg, 80% of the way there. Yeah, basically. And Fade says, let's do it in Lisp. Yeah, I would do it in Lisp. I would write it in Mesh, probably. All right, we got 10 minutes left, and uh, Clever Prince is not cooperating. Let me see what else we got here as an option to try. I'm not going to do this par and for Rust mode. Uh, Symex, an evil way to edit Lisp symbolic uh, expressions. Symexes, as trees in Emacs. I like to squirrel. Usage and customization. Look at the animated guide. The, the, the name of this user is pretty nice. Count Bajula. <laughs> so what it is. Hey, Glenn. Nice to see you. Alejandro asked a question in the chat. How many live viewers use IRC, Matrix, and similar? Well, you know what? Let's try this. Uh, IRC, Matrix. What, what, what else did you say, Alejandro? Add option XMPP, uh, Zulip. I just put a poll in the chat. You know, it's just, uh, just for fun. Now I can't see the chat anymore. Fantastic. There we go. Uh, Thomas says, you don't want just to stream, but to also save it at the same time. Well, um, OBS does that for me if I set it up. But the problem is that if someone joins a stream, they can't scroll back. But maybe that's not such a big problem. So at least in the poll that I see so far, it's uh, IRC at 55%, Matrix at 36%, and there are some people who use Zulip. Nobody mentioning XMPP, that's probably because uh, Case is on Twitch, not on YouTube. Okay, I'll end the poll. That was fun. Okay, um, let me just double check this. Uh, wait a minute. Are we back on this page again? Take a quick little look. I, I recognize this page, so I probably have been here before. Um, HL, left and right. This sounds more like what I want. Can I just really quickly install this and try it out? So uh, package install, Cymex, 1.0 stable, like the sound of that.
Uh, Fade says, I use Twitch to view the streams because it works better than YouTube. Yeah, as, as I saw last week, Twitch may actually work better than YouTube. All right, so um, Cymex, is it gonna work? Require Cymex. All right, so the package system is, is borked at the moment. Uh, let's maybe try it here instead in my actual Emacs config. I gotta turn Lispyville mode and Lispy mode off to start with. Straight install, ah, straight use package. Yeah, I keep forgetting what the thing is for that. Cymex. Cymex is using Lispy? Wow, okay, interesting. You must just piggyback on Lispy and change the behavior. Uh, Death B says, another difficulty for a streaming platform to be replicating chat. Well, I would want to have everything in one place in that case. I don't know, like, I don't think that me multi-streaming through YouTube and Twitch, I don't think Twitch is actually helping me really because I don't think new people find me just by browsing Twitch. So I don't know how much it really matters. Streams on Twitch and then after that publishing to YouTube, don't see why not. Yeah, I mean, most people come to the streams on YouTube. But as I saw last week, you know, people do go to Twitch if the YouTube is not working. So I don't know. Okay. Um, is this still installing stuff here? Why is it installing evil clever parens? So basically you install Cymex and it is it installs everything else. Is it gonna install uh, par edit at the same time? Smart friends. What is this package? Okay. Let's see how many packages this thing just loads up in my system as soon as I turn it on. Cymex mode. Um, all right, so the H and L thing, let's go back to this little blog post. So inside of a form, H and L, is that cap H? Huh. Is that right? It's not doing what it's supposed to. So maybe I'm not turning it on correctly. Oh. Evil state as well as a Hydra based modal interface. And Cymex initialize. Whoa, 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 whoa. No, no. Cymex initialize. And then what? Well, you have to have some kind of interface. Oh, okay. So you, you, you turn it on. Cymex mode interface. Are we hanging now? Okay. Cymex mode on. Okay. So then, oh. I don't know what's happening. Seems like it's a glue config of multiple packages. Yeah, I don't know. It, it seems like a little overkill for uh, what I would like to have. Lispy may still be the thing for me. I don't know. I just need to get better using it. Anyway, okay. So that's that's probably going to be it for this discussion on structural editing. Um, par edit. You know, there's a few people in the chat that who are you know. Uh, singing the praises of par edit. I've heard a lot of people talking about par edit over time. So if you're using vanilla Emacs key bindings, par edit probably is the right thing. It seems pretty good. Uh, though the barfing and slurping uh, functionality is probably something that you would have to get used to because uh, it you can get into a bad state pretty fast with your code, at least from what I've seen so far. Um. 
but yeah, probably I'll stick with Lispy for now because I'm I'm used well I'm used to, used to it enough that it should work. Maybe evil uh, clever prints would work on my own configuration, but I haven't actually tried it in a while. Um, so I think that's gonna do it for today. I need to make another video soon. It's been a while since I made an, a legitimate video, and I've been thinking about various different things I would like to do, but nothing has. Um, taken enough of my attention away from working on mesh that I've actually spent any time preparing a video. So I, I need to fix that, but maybe after I get some things done with the project in the next couple of weeks, I will be able to like, you know, release the death grip that my brain has in that project and then, you know, move my focus somewhere else for a little while. It, it tends to be the case w with the way that I operate is like if something's really interesting to me, I just can't stop thinking about it and I can't stop working on it. So uh, it's difficult for me to like load balance to other tasks. Uh, Rudolph says, how about one OSS contribution per video? Hmm, that's an interesting idea. Fix some Emacs bug. Yeah, I tried that one time before and uh, at least I tried it on a stream. It didn't work so well. Um, uh, Def B says, a uh, friendly reminder to continue the Emacs Lisp series. Yeah, the thing about that series is that it like got less and less views the more videos that I was making on it. It didn't feel worth, worth my time. But I think um, I'm starting to have a different perspective on that. Maybe it doesn't matter how many views a video gets so long as someone actually finds it useful because then that person might like, you know, stick around and like hang out in the live streams and in the IRC chat or the Discord. I think that's maybe more valuable in the end, but I don't know. The, the more niche the content gets, the, the less uh, it gets exposed on uh, YouTube. Thomas says, Cymex mode, editing Lisp in a Vim-like way is a great YouTube video. Who made that? Let's plug someone else's channel real quick. God, this is so slow. Body bag stealth camping. Yeah, Steve Wallace, that's a good channel. So, um, what am I looking for? Cymex mode, Vim. Okay, it's a presentation at uh, Emacs San Francisco three years ago. Hey, so who are you? No thanks, let's not play that. So anyway, if you want to check that video out, maybe that person actually knows how to use Cymax and can show you the right way to use it. Yeah, it says a video on Mesh. Um, yeah, I want to do some more videos on Mesh. Actually, I, I'm due for making a like an update video. What I would like to do is like some devlog style videos where I sort of talk about things that I've, I've been implementing because a lot of cool stuff has gone in recently. Um, and I would like to talk about it but I just haven't like actually had enough time away from the project to think about making a video about it. But I will do that for sure because I think it's pretty fun. It's a cool project. I'm basically just making a scheme implementation, but tweaking it a little bit. But the more that I actually uh, read about scheme, the more I just feel like you know, scheme is pretty awesome. Rudolph says, how's the house and everything settled in? Uh, yeah. Uh, we're, we've been settled in pretty well for a couple months, I think. Having a good time. Will I use Mesh tomorrow? Absolutely. Yeah, tomorrow I'm, I'm using Mesh all day. And I think I fixed a lot of the dumb issues we had last time. So hopefully, um, hopefully we won't have any weird debugging. However, I did not finish the meta object protocol implementation today like I intended to because I had other things I had to deal with. So we may have to spend a little bit of time in the morning finishing what I was starting there and I hope it doesn't take very long. But uh, the simplicity of the game that I'm trying to go for should not take so much time, I think. So I'm hoping that uh, even if I do have to spend some time finishing that, then it still makes some progress in the game. Rudolph says, scheme is amazing. I write it professionally. I would love to write scheme professionally. That sounds really awesome. Scheme is is just like I don't know what to say, man. If there's if there's uh if there would ever be a perfect language, I think scheme would be it.
issues are stressfully fun. Yes, I don't know. I like it sometimes. We have fun debugging parties on streams. So anyway, I'm going to stop rambling now. Um, so definitely check out the stream on the uh, Flux Harmonic Live channel tomorrow if you are interested in such things. There will be a couple streams, and uh, just, just keep an eye on the channel. Subscribe to it. Hit the bell on that channel if you haven't already. That way you'll be notified whenever I go live. Um, and uh, we'll have a little bit of fun doing that for the next few days, and that, that'll be it for that weekend. And then you know we'll be back to System Crapper stream next Friday as usual. Um, all right. Thanks everybody for being here today. I really appreciate all the uh, contribution and, and chat. And just to, to lead things off on a good note, we have the spam bots back again, always with the same name. Who knows how they managed to, to do this. Anyway, I uh, hope you all have a great weekend. Until next time, happy hacking. See ya.